Hi, and welcome to Two and a Half Beards. This week, science. I'll be talking about an article from Scientific American, my absolute most favorite magazine, because of the quality of its research and its writing. The articles are very good. Um, the pictures are pretty cool, too. That's a definite bonus. Um, so in this issue, they have an article called Why Good Thoughts Block Better Ones. As is cool. Yes, chess. Chess is what we're talking about. And what the two researchers who wrote this article did in the experiment that led to this article was they presented chess players who ranged in skill from expert grandmasters to amateurs and novices with two sets of chess boards. Or, uh, two chess boards. The first had a the first had two solutions, one of which could be achieved in five moves, and the other which could be achieved in three. The second had only the three move solution. The reason they set it up this way is because prior studies had indicated that the thing that they're studying, called the Einstein effect, um, is a cognitive bias. In fact, the foundation of, of nearly all of what we would call what we call cognitive biases that have been previously studied. The Einstein effect is the foundation of these, and what it does is when as soon as your brain recognizes the solution to a problem, it basically becomes blind to any other solution to the problem, even those that are much faster, more efficient, or safer. So in any case, in this study, they gave them the first board, and the, the five-step solution, the, 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 least, the less efficient of the two, if we're thinking about in terms of how, how many turns it takes to affect, is a better known move. So they had planned it so that the uh, participants would recognize that more readily than the three-step move, three-step solution, which was a lesser-known move. And indeed, that's what they found. They found that basically everybody recognized the five-step solution first, and as soon as they recognized that, they couldn't look away from the squares that were related to that move, even when they said they were actively looking for a different solution. They were basically unable to look away from that solution. Uh, the, the way that the researchers measured this is they actually attached cameras to the heads of the participants so they could measure where their eyes were. And what they found, as I just said, and I, I can't, I would love to show you some of these diagrams here, but they're just, they're just too small. What they found was that um, as soon as they had recognized that five move solution, their eyes spent a significantly higher portion let me see if I can get these percents here. No, they don't have it. They don't have it that way. A significantly higher portion of time looking at those squares. It's as if they couldn't take their eyes away from the solution. As soon as they found it, they couldn't think of anything else. And this bias was so strong that when they were presented with the three-move problem that could only be solved by the three-move problem, after having contemplated the first one that could be solved with the better-known five-move solution, Many of them said that the second chessboard was impossible. They had been so uh, conditioned isn't really the right word, but because of this effect, they were uh, their brains were so ready to accept the first solution as the most efficient because it was the first one it happened to notice that they couldn't even conceive of having a different solution to that board. And then, of course, later the researchers showed them yes, in fact, the second board could have been solved with the three-move solution, and you just didn't recognize it because you, you were so um, preoccupied. Again, is the wrong word, because we're really talking about a neurological uh, phenomenon. But because uh, any word I'm thinking of is bad, but because they couldn't see past that solution. Um, in fact, one, one of these grandmasters said, um, where is it? Well, he said something like, that's impossible. It's ridiculous. Of course I would have noticed. But he didn't. Now, one of their one of their findings was that people who were extremely skilled, the, the best of the grandmasters, did in fact notice both solutions on the first board at about the same time. Once they had noticed the, the more common five move solution, they were able to resist the temptation to continue looking only at that one and they were able to recognize also the three-move solution. So although it's unproven and they talk about wanting to do more studies, one of their conjectures is that if you're extremely skilled in your area, you can resist the temptation to um, follow, to, to be uh, obsessed again with 
that first path, the first path that you uh, see. And in, as by way of explaining this phenomenon, basically they say it's evolutionary. Um, the example they give is, for example, once you have learned how to peel a clove of garlic, well, it's very efficient and often very effective for your brain to file that away as the only way to peel a clove of garlic because it would just take too much time and energy to, every time you pull out another clove of garlic, rehash how to do it, relearn a different physical way of doing it, think about a different way to conceive of the clove of garlic. So it's a highly adaptive evolutionary heuristic. One of the things the authors say that you can do to resist this effect is simply to remember that you're subject to it. That is, when you first see a solution, say something to the effect of, I prefer to only look at this solution because it's the first upon which I came and I know that it's going to work, but I'm going to detach myself a little bit and look for other solutions. Um, another comment they make is that if you think you know the answer to something, then you cannot possibly be objective about it because this effect, in essence, blinds you to other solutions. So you're all, you're all, you've already lost your objectivity. You're already extremely subjective. I think this is especially important for creative people because so much of what we do is to try and make things that are not the common solution. Right? We can, we can see that we can go over here, but we want to take the different path. And often that path has not been well trodden, or it's an entirely new path. So it's especially important for us to constantly remind ourselves that although we see a solution, it may not be the best one. Although we see a solution to, uh, although we see a solution, it may not be the best one. Although we see a color we can put in our painting, it may not be the best one. Although I see a harmony I could put in my piece of music, it may not be the best one. Although I see how I could wrap up this column or news article or piece of creative writing with a, little, a tight little cliche or something, sentence, epigrammatic statement that would fit so well, perhaps it's not the best one. And we need to remind ourselves that we are constantly susceptible to falling into this trap. So I hope you found that as fascinating as I did. Next week, I'll see you next week.